Hey everyone, it's Jason. This is an unboxing for a brand new game I just got through uh, my Kickstarter. Uh, Wizard Kittens, the card game. Uh, it's a bunch of cute little kittens. Has some magic. Uh, two to four players, 15 to 30 minutes, 7 plus. Um, I don't know, it's a super complicated game. Uh, it's by Magpie Games. Um, these Wizard Kittens have accidentally unleashed the contents of a book of curses. You and your fluffy friends must collect the escaped curses and put them back before the librarian, Professor Whisper, catches you. Uh, perform the best magic while putting all the curses back in the tome and win. But if you don't manage all the curses before Professor Whisper arrives, then the kitty with the cleanest paws gets away scot-free and wins a game. So it's a semi-cooperative game. Um, seems pretty interesting. So we have... This is the special collector's edition. Um, this game, I believe, is the same same exact game as the re you buy in the store when it comes out. It just has a little stars on here. It actually has a glow in the dark cover, uh, which I just can't show off right now because I have too much lights down here and I don't feel like trying to walk through my room with my lights off. Uh, but let's take a look at it. I do have an expansion and some promo cards or kickstarts, but we'll, we'll go through them when we get there. Alright, so of course we got a rule book to start off with. Let's just take a quick look. Um, all the cool people that helped make this game. Introduction. Different character cards, all different cards. Kind of skip through this stuff. So, there's a lot going on here, as you can see. Um, so, each player has a ritual circle, which is what they're saying. So, each player has their own thing. There's like a base set. Um, you have a cat character. You have different cards you're trying to set up. Um, you have different things you can do on your turn. Uh, summon cards. To summon to draw extra cards. You can send one of your cards to another character. Um, you can swap or discard some of your cards, switch um, location of two cards. You gotta defeat these various curses, so they're gonna have like symbols here, such as two pinks and a purple, so you have to try and collect two pinks and a purple. Um, it's, it's as simple as that, it's like a quick matching game. Um, but you have different other things that happen, I'm just, just a complete brief overview of it. Uh, there's chaos cards that happen. Um, there's various scoring you can do, you get, you know, for completing certain objectives, certain curses, extra credit cards. Uh, winning the game. Advanced rules. And then there's a chaos mode if you want to make this a little bit harder. Uh, and then there's a two-player variant, which is co cool that they added that. Um... Alright, yeah, so it's basically the game is it's like a matching game. Uh, we'll kind of see that when we're getting through it. Uh, but it's kind of co-op because, semi-cooperative co-op because ideally you all want to win uh, and defeat all the curses. But if you can't, then you want to be the one with the least amount. So you have these little wooden tokens. They're kind of cool, little paw prints. I don't know why I opened them up. Just one more thing to be sitting around. Here's an insider box. We have a little tray. Comes out nicely. Top comes out. It's actually a very nice tray for a game. Yeah, it looks like I can take these counters and actually stick them in there. Um, this is uh, something you actually... I want to I praise this right now. This is not something you see in lots of games anymore. It actually like makes sense dividing. I mean, look at how deep this tray is. So even when I put this in there, you can go right to the top of that. But there's still a little bit of room in there, so like I don't know how many cards are in the expansion. Uh, but even here there's room for some more cards. So conceivably, and there's two extra spots. I'm assuming I can fit all of the expansion material in this box as well. Um, and we'll find out when we get there. Uh, but yeah, it's not something you often see. Usually they make just enough room. 
Um, I don't think they're going to fit... Oop, I dumped these out. Actually, are they going to fit Swede? No. That might be the only downside. Um, you know, a lot of people sweep all their games. All right, let's see what our cards are. Let's start with the big cards. After I already opened up a small one. Uh, where do we have anything to open this with? On the corners here. These will be our different character cards. I'm assuming this is probably like your cur might be your curses and stuff too. Um, all right. So we have our first kitty. You can play as Asa, Isa. I'm not sure I pronounce it. But there's the four abilities: summon, swing, swap, and switch. And you can flip it over. And then they have the advanced side here, um, which is actually neat because it has different abilities. So, all of the base characters, let's show you another one quick. We have Bebe. So, they both have Summon, Swing, Swap, Switch. So, when you play the basic game, um, all the cat characters, all the cat wizards, all have the exact same ability. But, if I go over to Advanced, they get different abilities. So, they both have Summon. They both have SWAT, and they both have, but now only uh, Asa has Switch, and then now there's Favor. So swing both the card from the Ritual Circle and the top card of the deck at another kitty. Um, whereas Bebe has um, Swing, she still has Swing, instead of SWAT, Switch, but now it also has Yoink. So that was a special uh, ability for them. Discard a card from your hand or from your ritual circle to take a card from any ritual circle and put it anywhere in your own. So basically, big card here if you're playing the advanced can send cards away um, with swing or it can basically steal somebody else's cards. Where Asa here is going to be more about switching cards or swing cards from your ritual circle and another one so helping out other players so it's kind of cool because you can play all on an even playing field um or you can flip them over and have different abilities and say there's is looking at like gleefully playing with them and then as they go away it's kind of funny that the advanced ones have like the before image so before and then after <laughs> Um, so that's two of our kitties. Where are the rest of them? There's one. We have a muffin. So there's the four basic abilities. And so they always have one, three of the regular abilities and their own special abilities. It's overflow. Draw two cards, put one in your ritual circle, and give the other to another kitty to put in their ritual circle. Again, kind of like helping out. And there should be a fourth one. There's a fourth one. We have Grumpkin. Um, so there's basic abilities. So we need some tarot cards, it looks like. Sitting, knock the ball over, is now sitting in there. Uh, dismiss. Discard all types of a single card. Discard all cards of a single type from a single chapter in your ritual circle. Just helps you, like, clean up the field. Alright, so then we have our different chapters. Uh, spoilers, I'm gonna say, in case you care. Uh, we'll just kind of see the different things. So, chapter one. The chapter, I think the three chapters are all the same. Um... We have some different cards, like a Possession Curse. Uh, Start an additional two points for each curse their opponents have defeated, so that's how you earn some different points. And they're all going to have curses on the back. Musician Curse. Those are three different ones. The other one needed four, this one needs three. Uh, we have some new rules. So they're going to be under Chaos Cat. Um, when a curse is defeated, the kitten to the right collects one of the used ritual components 
of their choice before they're discarded. So you actually get help helps out for the next one. Uh, a permade curse. Score one additional point for each familiar in your ritual circle at the end of the game. Uh, here, when you draw a chaos cat, chaos shuffle, immediately each player passes a card to the right. New roll, when a curse is defeated, each player passes a card to the right immediately. Each player passes a card to the right in your chapter. All cards in the chapter one to the right. Immediately each player takes a card from their left. So some chaos mode cards. We have a snail curse. Uh, I'm not sure what the symbols mean. It might be in difficulty. So here's that new rule immediately. Uh, Sturdy Cat Curse. For additional point for each scroll in your ritual circle at the end of the game. So it must be these are what the different things are. So scroll. Um, here's new rule. This has a pause. This is I think one of these are for the two player game. Vampire Curse. In such a weird rule uh, or order, when you draw a Chaos Cat, here's some other different ones. Uh, Infernal Curse. Score two additional points for each curse your opponent has to be. I haven't really shown that. That's what the Chaos Mode card looks like on the back. And all these guys just have the curse symbol. Uh, Bloom Curse. Another new rule. Copycat curse score one additional point for each potion in your ritual circle. I think, uh, I believe right now it's like green is for green, like blue is for familiar, purple is for skull. Just to kind of help you keep it on. Here's number, uh, another chaos cat. Chaos mode, so a couple different modes it looks like. Uh, catnip curse. Some more cards. Uh, bread headed curse. For a each additional artifact in your ritual circle. Uh, the Love Curse. And some more Chaos Cats. I have to kind of look to see more what those are. New rules, new rules. Yeah, so say new rules on some of them and curses, uh, curse mode on the back. Um, let's just look at that quick. Chaos Cat is hitting in the middle of the Ritual Component Deck. When someone draws the Chaos Cat, open up Chapter 3, flip up the Chapter 3 card, all kittens in the Ritual Circles in the center, drawing you Curse from the Curse Deck. You can add a new rule. Okay, so this is going to add some different... Different chaos stuff in there. Where's J on there? A, B, C, D, E, F. Shuffling of rule cards, you can necessarily draw when necessary. Otherwise, I think you're just mixed in there. So there's like a chapter 1 curse, a chapter 2 curse, chapter 3. Alright. Um, yeah, it's just, it's kind of a matching game. Um, I'll have to read the rules more, explain it, but... So, here are extra credit cards. I don't know what those are yet. Are they, like, just extra bonuses? Just some different colored backs, some purple, some blues, one for each color. Wizard Kitten. These are your cots. This is the Professor and Chaos Cats. Okay, so a Chaos Cat Chapter 3, specifically. Chapter 1 cards. Okay, one for each player then. So you took your own uh, set of books. Gotcha. That's so you can figure out which one you're trying to complete, I believe. And then, like, here's your extra credit. Uh, so if all curses are complete, you can add one for each potion left in your ritual circle. Um... Extra artifact, extra familiars, extra scrolls, uh, plus five for a three of a kind left. And it just meant if you can't clean up all your stuff, at least you have an idea, like you maybe try and save certain things. Uh, six for a complete set, three for each pair, maybe three for each 
three for each different pair. All right, well, that's it. So that's the extra credit cards. All right, we got one more little gex here to go. And these should be all our different artifacts, and they're probably all going to be the same, just repeated, I believe. Yep, just a bunch of pink artifacts. Purple scrolls. Blue familiars and green potions, and they all just say wizard kittens on the back. Nothing super special or spectacular there. Alright, I know I didn't do a great job of describing the game, and I apologize for that. I haven't played it, I just read about it when Kickstarter sounds really fun. But it's, like I said, it's more or less just like a matching game. Um. You flip a curse out, you have to try and match your components. You can work with the other players to trade them stuff to match. Um, and that's how that goes. Now we're going to look at the expansion. Um, and maybe if enough people like this, I can go back through and try and do like a, like a playthrough video. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea of at least what you're buying if you see this on a store. Um, because it doesn't show a lot on the back, does it? I mean, it shows all the cards, I guess. But, I don't think it really exactly explains it. It's a matching type game. So here we have Magical Monsters Expansion. So there's a kitty with a little Cerebrus puppy dog. Um, so we'll see what this adds to the game. This is also going to hit retail. I don't know if it'll hit retail at the same time. Uh, like they're both going to come out like simultaneously or if this will come out later but this is still retail content making sure we got everything out of there So here we got a new rule book, which is going to all the fun people that made this. Uh, project manager Marissa Kelly is also the art director. So shout out, this is some pretty art. Uh, so we have new characters. It gives us a fifth character to play as, so someone has one they can swap out. Uh, we have some monster cards, some chapter three cards, uh, some new rule chaos, extra credits. Um, Magical Monster Expansion is split up into three modules. Three new sets of rules and cards that can be added to the card game. The first module is simple, more cards. The river all the new cards can be added to the same stack. Second one lets you play with five players. That means adding more cards to the ritual components to be added to them. It's basically like one saying you can just throw in uh, some of your new rules or extra credits or the monster cards. The second one is adding the fifth player. Oh, the third one adds the monsters to the curse deck. These bring a whole new school of complication, school of complicated, crazy circumstances for your wizard kittens. Um, it's kind of neat though that you can do either one. Either you can add with the more cards, which are the um, four extra credit cards, the new rules, or the extra characters you can swap out. Uh, module two is you can add a fifth player, so that way you can add just more cards in there. Uh, so we can six curses, use eight total, assembling, uh, okay, there's different difficulties, red, green, and teal are the difficulties, which we didn't know before. And then the third one are monsters. Um, take two curses of each of a shuffling gender and then remove two around guys. Okay, so taking out some of the curses dead monsters. When it comes to set up, create a new deck of two curses each difficulty is now going to shuffle them up. Okay, I'm not going to read how to add them in there. Um, you want to make the game easier. Instead of taking out two curses, take out the two high difficulty ones and replace them. Put in five players, then just add the two. Um, information on each of the different monsters. So they look like they kind of work the same as the curses. You have to place stuff to match them. And then we have the two player variant. All right. 
that's cool because it adds uh so if you have another player that wants to play you can play a fifth player it's always fun to add more people it game seemed like it'd be quick enough with five people so we have chapter one cards or uh fifth player cards the orange one we have some extra credits um let's zoom in on these a little bit uh plus five for each monster you defeated plus three for each monster another player defeated uh, four for every original component, and five for having the most. And then we got three more of each of those, and that's to add for the fifth player. So nothing, nothing too spectacular there. I'm like, extra credit cards are cool. Like, any extra bonuses for trying to help gain points or make the game a little bit more fun or interesting. But if you don't include monsters, then a couple of them don't matter. Alright, I hate this. They... I don't... I hate when they put them like this or they're really hard to open. Alright, so we have our new kitten. We have Van Meowsing. Like Van Helsing. So he has the four basic abilities. And then if we flip them. The advanced side. So we get a raw ability. Put one card from your ritual circle under this mat or put all the cards from under this mat anywhere in your circle. Oh, that's kind of neat. Just save them up until you need them. Don't use them unless you have to. But it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's almost like you have to then use all of them. Uh, so here we have some monsters. We have Pupperus. Three of a kind. Uh, no other curses or monsters can be defeated. Well, this monster is undefeated. Uh, cracking. Uh, choose. At the end of your turn, your kitty on your left chooses a card in your ritual circle and swings it to the kitty on your right. We have the Basilisk. He's got his eyes covered. Uh, this chapter is frozen. Cards can be added to this chapter but cannot be removed. The Dragon. At the end of your turn, discard a card in your ritual circle, matching the top card of the discard pile. The Phoenix. When you defeat the Phoenix, discard two penalty cards. Then each curse stack isn't empty. Shuffle the Phoenix back. If it's empty, then the kitty you defeat the Phoenix getting extra points. And I believe this means you have to have all four. Or any four? I'm not sure. I'm uh, not sure on that. Uh, Pixies. At the end of your turn, choose the kitty to your right with each and left. Each choose a card in your circle. They swap one. Switch which cards they choose. Uh, some new rules. Immediately, so you must choose one card. So it's just making you switch and stuff. I'm not going to read through all these. Just a bunch of new rules, which make the game a little bit trickier. And then here's what is also super fun. Is it all of this fits right in the box? And I have the expansion and the thing. Plus, there's probably enough room. Looks like we have room for one more expansion. So if they had a sixth character, I have enough room for a sixth character, which I think is actually the Kickstarter stuff. Um, so now we're gonna look at Kickstarter. So, if so, warning. So we went through the base set. We went through the expansion. That's stuff in retail. This is all Kickstarter stuff. Well, the sleeves might not be. They might actually release the sleeves on the store. Uh, but yeah, we got a bunch of magical kitten sleeves. I can sleeve the cards. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to see if they fit in there with their, their sleeves on. The only thing that's weird is... I'll have to look at those. Because I think some of them have to be... Um, individual. Yep, so here we have a gray token. Again, this is part of the Kickstarter. I believe there's a Kickstarter exclusive character. Um, I'm looking at the sleeves quick because I am curious. Yes, so there is a giant pack here of one with the backer. And that should probably, so instead of having this as the back, you can have the like logo. 
Um, and then we have a bunch of clear ones. And this is pro this is for, I'm sure it's for all of these guys. Not these. But these ones. Like the extra credit or the book ones. Because they all have to... Uh, um, you have to be able to see the backs to know which ones they are. Oh, and look at that. Makes me foily. I just want to sweep one of these to see what it looks like. So there's a sweep card. And then actually look at that. Sweep card fix in there. Um, it's going to add a little bit of thickness. So, but we'll see right there. There's, there's a little bit of room. So hopefully that means that if I sweep all of these, um, I can still fit everything in there. That's what it seems like it's going to happen. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, let's get back to the Kickstarter stuff. We have some more curses. They got a little Kickstarter symbol on the bottom. Uh, just so we know that. So, to compare, here is a little wand on the bottom. I believe it's going to show that this is the expansion. So a little wand or torch, I guess it would be. Showing his, uh, his flaming carcass on the cover of the box. And then the base set ones. I don't believe have any symbols. Yep. So there's your difference. There's now like dots in the corner. So there's a little expansion symbol. So that's always helpful too in case you want to pull them out. Like you don't want to play the harder curses. You know which ones they are. So we have... A half empty curse. Score one additional point for each curse your opponents have defeated. We have our new kitty. We have Bandit, which is the four basic abilities. And then he's blowing bubblegum. Uh, and we have Forage. Draw the top two cards of the, of the discard pile and place them in the same, chap same chapter in your circle. It's a little extra stuff to do. We have a new monster, uh, Bashing Beetle. At the end of your turn, discard the last ritual component in one chapter. You must discard a card if able. Oh, we have another new monster, or kitty. I didn't realize there was two of them. Uh, Orion. And Orion does. So now we have up to six, with the Kickstarter stuff, I can play up to six players, or I I can't play up to six players. I have six different tokens, but I have seven different kitties. Um, switch one artifact for any two cards in a single chapter, or any two cards in a single chapter for one artifact. So it's a bargain. We have uh, another monster, the Omnivorous Cube. He's eating my dishes. Uh, free hugs. I uh, love it. Requires at least five components of any kind of defeat. The first time a card is discarded on each of the kitties turn, the cube eats it. Place one of the discarded cards on the cube. The cube is worth one point and takes one card, plus one card to defeat for each card on it. Oh boy, so he gets bigger the longer you take. Oh, we got more kitties. They're giving us all sorts of kitties in here. Uh, Whiskitos. Uh, party. Swing one card randomly picked between the top card of the discard pile and the chosen card from your own circle to each kitty on either side of you. Interesting. I like to get some different play abilities. We have some new, new rules. This is an immediate... Whoops. I'm throwing my cards around. Uh, ooh, we have another kitty. I didn't know there was this many kitties. I thought it was like one more kitty. Uh, Singer. So that's the one from the cover. Kind of funny that that's a Kickstarter cat. Um, poof. Turn up to three cards in your ritual circle face down for the rest of the game. You can look at them at any time. Other kitties cannot. Uh, we have an unlucky curse. All the unlucky stuff. 13. There's a horseshoe. 
Uh, there's some salt being poured. He's under a ladder. He walked by another black cat. He's a broken mirror. Um, I don't know why the birds are unlucky. Why a rainbow is not really lucky. Or what these shoes have to do with anything. Uh, score one fewer point for each curse you have and your opponents have defeated. Oh boy, we got more. We have a daisy. Um, rainbow. Discard up to one of each card type from your circle. Alright. And you probably want to get rid of cards sometimes just because you need different ones or you don't want extras out. Uh, we have a griffin. Three of a kind in corresponding chapter or one in each chapter. At the start of your turn, the player to your right moves any one card in your circle to another chapter in your circle that has the same card already in it. Marquis Detect. He's an inventor. What is he inventing? He invented a wooden kitty. I love it. Clink. Swing all cards of a single type from a single chapter in your circle to another circle. I really hope... I, I, I mean, I know these are Kickstarter cards, but like after going through these, I really honestly hope that they would... Uh, like, release, like, a Kickstarter pack for people to buy. I mean, there's just so many extra kitties in here for people to play with. Um, pair of ritual components, at least one pair, but could be more. When you would defeat rock monsters with at least one pair of identical cards, you may choose not to. If you choose not to defeat it, then it's worth three points per pair of identical cards from the proper chapter. So, basically, if you beat them once or three times, you can get more cards. Uh, we have... Sir Isaac McFluffy King, McFluffy Kings, and he is going to attack you. Uh, oh, he does. He has a duel. You and another kitten each pick two cards in your own circles. Sir Isaac first, take turn playing one of the four cards in your own circles. And we have a new rule. Okay, that was cool. Um, so there's not enough cards. I don't. To play six players, uh, even though we have six tokens, just means you get a different colored token if you'd like. Uh, because they didn't give me any extra regular deck of cards. Uh, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more cats on top of the original five. And look, they all fit right in there. And that fits right in there, and it slides a little bit, but that's not bad. Um, I don't think I have... I mean, you don't need to sleeve these necessarily, because they're not big enough. Or, I mean, you're not shuffling these a lot, I would imagine. But if you were going to sleeve them, the only thing I can think of is the same thing I have for my Ninja Turtles uh, miniatures game, is I could buy 4x6... Or 5x7 photo sleeves. And they slide in and you just got to cut a piece off. Um, it works. It's not the best solution. Um, but that's alright. Like I said. I, I would probably sleeve them. Just so that I don't have. Uh, we're going to like fingerprints. And all that stuff on them. But that everybody. Thank you for watching. That was Wizard Kittens. I know I didn't do a super great job explaining the game. Um. But it seems fairly fairly simple to understand. Uh, you have curses out. You play cards. And you have to play cards in your circle. And you have to use them to defeat the curses. Before you draw a bad kitty. Um, check you guys later. Bye.